Somewhere out there, there's a robot missing a limb who ate its friend in order to replace its components. Researchers are trying to give robots metabolism and the ability to consume others in order to restore their own body and we'll talk about it. Incidentally, these robots can also reproduce, heal, and raise their young. Fair warning, researchers are being kind of cheeky with the well technically part. This is part of a larger idea in robots that's trying to create synthetic life. Now the qualities of life are just kind of what we've all agreed upon, what makes up life. I'll preface it and say it doesn't really matter what we decide is life, it doesn't change their nature, but they're going to include they must be made of cells, they need metabolism so they have to use energy and acquire it somehow, they need to be able to respond to the external environment, grow and change, reproduce using some genetic material, they also need to evolve and maintain homeostasis. Some of the most important ones are going to be reproduction and metabolism. So far, the synthetic life that we've made has been in making bacteria and more recently, yeast, assembling entirely artificial genomes, putting them in a cell, and bringing them to life. But many want to make robots technically alive. I myself think it's a really cool idea. On to our paper, and then we'll discuss some advancements towards making technically living robotics. Now, what they did here was create these very simple structures. There are other similar mechanisms that involve having nanobots which can self-repair and detect damage within robotics. This is on the same lines. They're able to form themselves, and if one part becomes damaged, they can discard a part and pick it up from another. They can also reproduce, in a sense, by discarding a section, and then that section can assemble itself and can even use the help of the adult robot to assemble it. Ideally, this kind of technology would involve the skin of a robot, its flesh. Using these mechanisms, if a damage occurs, they would then be able to repair themselves, and if they don't have enough material internally, they could consume another robot in order to gain those materials, which is where metabolism comes in. Now, obviously, we would want flesh that has actual cells. I say that like surely everyone knows that, but we would want this to work on the cellular level in which they could take in those components and then bring them into the flesh to create it. This is, of course, if we wanted to shoot for something that is technically an animal, having cells and different kinds of tissue. While we're at it, you should know that not all of your cells have genomic material. Red blood cells, while still cells, do not contain a genome. If you're wondering how that works, they just kind of live for a little bit and then die and then that's it. The idea that they can help younger ones repair themselves is kind of like parental care, which I think is really neat. This would be applied to subsections of robotics, but the same behaviors could be applied to an adult robot. Now, as for making genomic material, there has been a lot of work towards making nanobots that can act like DNA. Creating a coding system like these, where they could code for the body of the robot and random mutations could allow for change to occur is also not out of the question. That would be a massive leap forward from where we are here, but creating lifelike materials that could perform genetic tasks and even engage in metabolism is ongoing work, it's nascent. Now the direction I would like to see metabolism go in is actually with beta-voltaic batteries. These are ones that could last thousands of years and would never need to be charged. They take carbon-14, which is a byproduct from nuclear power, and then they encase it in a diamond shell. The beta decay from that carbon-14 is able to give off power. Now it doesn't give very much power, but researchers have also combined it with more traditional battery systems, so it can be a hybrid, and that's much more efficient and gives the option of external recharging when needed. I imagine something like this could make a robot self-sufficient, but they could also make it intelligent enough to know how to assemble itself. I'm not sure how people would feel about the blueprints for making a robot being the genetic code and allowing them to assemble others, but we're kind of almost there. Humans do need to be in the driver's seat. So what do you think of the idea of synthetic life or creating robots that technically fulfill the requirements of being alive? Because I think we are close. You should also know that there is no requirement to have a juvenile stage in order to be considered alive. Bacteria come into life and are born by just dividing, and each individual cell is an adult. If we had robots that simply assembled each other, that would qualify for the components of life, so long as the schematics for that assembly are somewhere internal and are passed on. That would qualify the need for genetic material. Now, if you're wondering if researchers actually read sci-fi or consider that maybe they're reenacting many cautionary tales, the answer is yes, we do all read sci-fi. And I also really do want to see technically living conscious robots. If you hadn't figured that out, is it a good idea? Probably not, but it would be really cool.